and welcome. Thanks for joining us. The show has an NL East matchup. It's the Miami Marlins taking on the Philadelphia Phillies. And we'll be back with the first pitch right after this. Just about set to go now. And on the hill for the Phillies, Zach Wheeler. Singing, he's managed to rack up a lot of innings on the mound this season. And boom, this guy's getting close to 200 innings on the year. You know, there's some milestones that pitchers go after. One of them, 20 wins. But another one that we don't talk about a whole lot is that 200 inning threshold. Needing to be able to surpass that says that, hey, they prepared themselves for the season. They were able to stay healthy and they were able to pitch effectively enough to stay in ball games long enough to reach that number. Pretty impressive on what he's done, and it's not over yet. Xavier Edwards now at the plate as he swings through strike one. The 0 2. Knocks it down, tapped to the mound, and off his leg to first, and he just gets it there in time. One away. Definitely some concern here. That ball came back and got him right on the pitching arm, as you can see him trying to shake it off. And if nothing else, you worry about him getting some dead arm and losing some feeling, but from what I can tell, I think they're going to let him continue, and that's a really good sign. Now the number two hitter, Brian De La Cruz. Chris Zach Wheeler's turned into one of the best pitchers in the National League, if not all of baseball. He's been an all-star. In 2021, he finished runner-up in the National League Cy Young Award race to Corbin Burns. He's got nasty stuff. Foul ball there. Well, he gave up on that pitch early, and it ended up staying in the zone. I'm sure he's kicking himself and would like that pitch again. Next yeah. offering is in for a strike. Swings through that one. It's a strikeout. That's the second out. Definitely made him chase a little bit out of the zone right there. I don't think that's a strike if he takes it. Pretty textbook pitching. Get ahead in the count. Get the guy in the box on his heels and then force him to chase your pitch where he doesn't have much of a chance to do any damage. Jesus Sanchez stands in now and watches strike one. Strike two. Well, he's gotten ahead with two pitches oh, down in the strike. zone. He has plenty of options right here. He can go up. He can go away. He can add velocity. He can subtract. Inside, and it hit him. He had two strikes on him, and he hit him. That's one of those lookout pitches. As soon as it leaves the pitcher's hand, you start bracing for impact, knowing that it's going to be hard to get out of the way of that one. Now it's Yuli Gurriel. First pitch, and that's in for a strike. That's a strike across the top of the zone. And at bat like this is almost over as it begins. In this situation, you have no idea what the next pitch is going to be. You just got to hope that you can make contact. Nope. Just outside. It's a ball and two strikes. It's a good take. the mark there and the count is even two and two got him looking that's a strikeout one left for Miami and now it's the Phillies turn no score back after this on the show Back 
here at Citizens Bank Park. And on the hill here today, Jesus Lazardo. How about a report on him, Chris? Well, that whip is just below the league average, and that's a good thing in this case, not allowing too many base runners. So on most days, he's going to go out there and compete and put his team in a position to win, and I expect to see that from him in this one today. Here's the left fielder, Kyle Schwarber. He's not going to get cheated up there. No, he's not. He's looking to do damage with every swing he takes. That one's in there. That's strike one. And he deals. Now one and one. And another ball. Two balls, one strike. But you want. You see the velocity 97 with that fastball. pitch and that one clips the corner out there on the mound he's setting the tone early with the fastball 98 miles per hour up on the scoreboard runs it up to 96 to record the punch out just a mid 90s challenge fastball right there not much to it and I'm sure he'd love another swing at it because it was in a very hittable location those are the swings where you can sometimes start to question yourself as a hitter and say, how did I miss that? But you know what happens? Hampson sizes this one up and puts the squeeze on that one. Two down. That is cool. The second base. This is Bryson Stock. Obviously a guy who makes good contact, hits for average. But one of the things in today's game, the value in the fact that he hits both righties and lefties. And the first pitch misses for ball one. They're so reliant on the matchups nowadays, Chris, and it's huge when you don't have to sit a guy or platoon him. When you can hit you know, both sides in terms of pitcher's arms, nope. you're a guy that it's hard to take out of the lineup, and I think it's very important today when everything is under the microscope. And that misses upstairs now, three and oh. Downstairs and it misses ball four. Well, he tried to nibble right there and just missed his spot. The hitter didn't offer at it. Now he has somebody to worry about over at first. And now it's Alec Bohm. Pitch misses there and it's one and oh. Stop off of first with two away. Late swing, fouled off. Step off, throw to first. Stop, back in on a dive. Here's a 1 1. They say it went. One ball, two strikes. In the dirt, and it scoots away. And now, a man into scoring position. Man on second, two down. Shoots a line drive single into right center. Stop. Headed for the plate. He'll score easily. And it's 1-0. Mission accomplished there as he picks up the RBI to give him the lead. Anytime you rip a line drive the other way, you feel really good about what you did at the plate. You trusted your hands, you let the ball travel, and you took the barrel straight to it. That's great work right there. Brandon Marsh steps to the plate. That one's in there. 0-1. And the pitch. 
And that one wrapped foul. And down on strikes he goes. Good job at damage control right there. So one run in the inning on this base hit. It's now one nothing. It's Major League Baseball on the show. Back here in Philadelphia, second inning, set to go. Digging in, it's the speedy outfielder, Garrett Hampson. And a pitch. Strike one. And he bunts, but that's a foul ball. Righty delivers. Good eye right there. I don't think he was trying to miss by that much in an 0-2 count. Just tried to overthrow that pitch. The punch out there. One up, one down. Here's Joey Wendell. Out there to center, Rojas under it. He's got it, and there's two down. Jacob Stallings that, 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 now. The designated hitter, Jacob Stallings. And the pitch a little bit low, ball one. Swings and misses, and it's one and one. Man, 91 on the slider right there. That's a hard one. That's a low end fastball for some guys. Two outs. And that one pulled foul. Sit down on strikes. A controversial called strike three to end the inning. And one, two, three go the Marlins. They're down one nothing. Bottom of the inning, there's the shortstop at the play. Edmundo Sosa. The line and the pitch. And ball one. That's inside, oh, and now 2-0. and oh. Oh, He never moved because he never had time to. But that kind of velocity, you'd prefer that pitcher work away. Misses with the 2-0, oh, and he's fired three straight outside the strike zone. Next pitch in for a strike, 3-1. and one. Kicks and fires. Hard on the ground to first. He steps on the bag. Leadoff man retired here in the second. Here's Jake Cave now. And that's in there for strike one. And a strike in there. Boog, our man, Daryl Parker, DP, had a home plate for this one. Pretty average size strike zone, but the book on him is that it sort of moves around. You can't always count on how he's going to call it from game to game. The wind of the pitch. And that's in the one dirt. Ball. Yeah, he's Super one of those umpires that I have to see make his call on a borderline pitch before I start making my call. Like you said, it's not always predictable, but it's pretty fair for the most part. Left-hand hitter waits. Up the middle, Edwards. 
Already two out here in the home half of inning number two. Don't let him with this guy's internal clock. He knew he had plenty of time to take that extra step, secure his grip on the baseball, and make a strong, accurate throw. Here's the center fielder, Johan Rojas. There's the strike. Oh, and two as he waves at that one. Ahead 0-2 in the count. Sure, you've got four pitches you can work with, but throw something you can command and get this at bat over with as quickly as possible. 0-2 oh, now. That's outside. And yeah, the 1-2 misses to even the count. He's trying to stay down in the zone, but the hitter just will not chase. Now back in a 2-2 count, he's going to have to go to something else to get him out. This one popped up. Edwards on the move towards foul ground. Fair ball. And here's the catcher, Garrett Stubbs. That one back up the middle and it gets through. Throw in holds the lead runner at second. Two on now with two away. Didn't take long to get a result for that at bat. That can be a really tough pitch to handle. A front door breaking ball, but he did a great job staying in there, keeping that front shoulder closed. He didn't spin off the ball and hook it foul, which happened so many times. Schwarber batting for the second time, and that's strike one. He struck out swinging at his first at bat. Next offering is in for a strike. Man, I'm pretty impressed out there on the mound right now. I mean, these are tough spots where pitchers really got to bear down. Those last two pitches were well executed. 0-2 now. And look out as that one ran in and got him. You know, Boog, you always say how important it is to have a good feel for the game. I, I say after the game, you step into the box, I'll throw some fastballs at you. No, actually, I think we're good, Chris. Castellanos in now. Takes ball one off the plate. Next offering misses, and it's 2-0. and oh. Pressure's on right here. 2-0 count, base is loaded. You don't want to fall to a three-ball count and then walk in or on. He's got to challenge the hitter right here. 2-0. Swing and a ground ball up the middle. That's a base hit. One runs in, here's the throw to the plate. And he's in there as they score a pair on the play. Well, that's a big at bat coming through in the clutch to drive in a pair. Once you get the ball by the pitcher, there's a lot of base hits up the middle, even on ground balls. So a nice job to use that big hole and get himself a hit. Next to hit, Bryson stopped. He walked and came around to score his first time up. And look out. That one gets him. The second man he's plunked in this one. You know, Boog, there always seems to be that oh no moment for the pitcher when he's lost control of his pitch. And most of the time, it's right when he lets it go. He knows that it's not headed where he intended it to go. Boom. In the box, lays off for ball one. Big moment in this game. Two outs, two runners in scoring position. And could really break this thing wide open early. And the 1-0. -oh. Swing, and that ball smashed on a line. Nice grab on the run. And that's the inning. Two runs in the inning, but they strand three. We played two full. It's the Phillies three, and the Marlins nothing. Top half of the third inning, and now the catcher comes up to him. Nick Fortes. 
This guy, one of the best defensive catchers going. You talk about framing, the ability to block, catch, and throw. He is at the top of the game. Right side, hard hit. And he takes it himself for the out. Batting on the third base, number five, John. John Birdie at the plate. First offering, and it just misses. It's softly on the ground to third. Boom. Throws out to first. And a couple of quick outs. Now back. Second base. Xavier Edwards. Xavier Edwards will hit next. He's over one. And takes low for ball one. Here's a strike. One in the one. The wind of the pitch. Comes up empty. That's strike two. up on the left side of the infield and makes the play and that's out number three three up three down for him there we move on to the bottom of inning number three it's the Phillies three and the Marlins nothing back here in Philadelphia except for the bottom of the third and digging in for Philadelphia Brandon Marsh been a rough start on the mound for this guy. This third inning is so important for him to get on track, turn the page, settle in, do all those things you need to do to give your team a little bit of length in this one. Left hand batter waits. Swing and a miss. 0 oh, 2 now. Quickly in an 0 2 count, you've got to figure out a way to shorten your path to the baseball. Put it in play somewhere, then you got a chance. Can't connect on the curveball, struck him out. Very frustrating right there as a speedy potential base runner when with two strikes you just struggle to put the ball in play. You don't even have to get a hit at that point. You can help your team just by reaching on an error, but some way you got to find a way to shorten up the swing and put the ball in play next time. And first offering is fouled off. Looked like you got a little excited on that fastball. Got to think to yourself, you want to stay up the middle. That way, if you're a little bit early, you hit it out of the ballpark. If you're a little late, opposite field not. Why to kick the pitch? Next offering misses down and away. Excellent arm action on that two strike changeup. Just missed. Man, he wanted that call. And a pitch. Two, two, the count. And downstairs. Well, he's having a tough time getting a pitch by him. As a hitter, you feel pretty confident that you're seeing different pitches still able to make some type of contact. And that one lifted in the air center field. Hampson under it. Two down. Up next for Philadelphia. Two outs, base is empty. So digging in now for Philadelphia, Jake Cade. Grounded out his first time up. In there at the knees. That's strike one. 0 and 1. The pitch. Fights that one away, and the count remains 0-2. Kicks and deals. That one drifts Whoa, inside. Really good take, especially with two strikes. 
lined, and that's a base hit. Really nice job of two strike hitting in that at bat. Nice job of driving that pitch the other way on a line. You know, hitters, they take so many reps in the cages working on going to the opposite field, and it doesn't always translate into the game, but right there it did, and he did it perfectly. Rojas oh, stands in with two away as he takes a ball. One for one with a single and a run scored so far. The lefty to 1 0. On the ground, right side. They get the force, and that'll do it. One hit, one left. On to inning number four. It's the Phillies three, and the Marlins nothing. Back at Citizens Bank Park, John Chompy with Chris Singleton, and set to lead off the fourth, Brian De La Cruz. Wheeler back to work. Swings through that one out in front that time. That misses. Nope. And it's a ball to strike. The pitch. Swings through that one for strike two. Clearly was sitting on a fastball right there. It just ended up out in front of the slider. Hey, you can't fault him for his commitment. Now he's just going to have to battle with two strikes. Swing and a miss. The high heat too much on that one. With that kind of velocity and elevated fastball, even if it's still in the strike zone, can be tough for hitters to get on top of. Sanchez stands in now, looks at that one inside. Next offering is in for a strike. late on that fastball the baseball is coming out of his hand very well he's been able to paint all four corners but really good ride at the top of the zone hitters have to respect that very difficult pitch to hit Stott over to first in time two quick outs here in the top of the four well he's doing a nice job of keeping the ball out of the air lets the defense work behind him with another ground ball good execution Yuli Gurriel comes up to hit struck out looking at his first at bat Here's a rip to short, but he's there for the third out. Just a beautiful play. Where's the cape? In the air like Superman. Diving catch, and he ends the inning. Back here at the ballpark, bottom four. Here's the catcher, Garrett Stubbs. Here comes a pitch. Ball one, no strikes. That one missed. No strike. The wind to kick the 2 0. Fouls one off out of play back to our left. The pitch. Swing and a ball popped up. Birdie has a beat on it. Makes the grab. And there's one down. Up next for Philadelphia. No left fielder. Kyle. So the lineup flips over. Kyle Schwarber comes up to hit here. First pitch and he just misses. And that's outside. Yep, that out. that well, one misses. And that's ball three. Carl, I would expect in this 3-0 count, you're taking all the way. See if he'll walk you. 
Swing and a miss, and it's three and one. Love to see it. Power versus power right there. Three one, and he couldn't come up with it. Boog, if I were him, I'd be nibbling around the plate as well. I mean, this guy is just capable of hitting pitches outside of the zone and driving them a long way. Nick Castellanos at the plate now. And first offering is fouled off. And a pitch. And that curveball drops in there for a strike. Good approach right there. You want to get something just a little higher that you can elevate. Stay out of that double play. Next offering way off the plate. Ground ball to the right side. Sneaks through, base hit. They fired in quickly, so it's first and second with only one away. A couple of hits in a row for him here. Not much to this one other than just a willingness to go the other way and put the ball in play. That's a team to bat right there. Nice job of staying back and letting the ball get deep. First and second, one out. Bryson Stott stands in for the Phillies. The 0 1. That one down the line. Dive, and he's got it. Over to first. Nicely done for the out. Third base have to be so quick with their first step reactions. Hot shots like that. That's why they call it the hot corner. That's a perfect example, though. There's no way he gloves that one if he's not dialed in, anticipating something coming his way, staying on his toes every pitch. Really nice job to get back up, set himself, and make a strong throw across the diamond. Now, here is Alec Bohm. Oh, he's so good about trying to drive the ball to the opposite field gap in these situations. If he takes that approach, he could bust this game wide open. Check swing, but he went too far. 0 oh 2. Two outs, two in scoring position. Next pitch misses way outside. So critical to keep an eye on the pitch count this time of the year. Guys can start to run on fumes a little bit. Mechanics can drop off. And ah, that's strike three and the third out. So we take a break. Phillies leave a couple, but they lead it 3-0. Welcome back. We go to the top of the fifth. Here's Garrett Hampson. This is a guy you got to keep an eye on when he digs in. Definitely been known to drop a drag bunt from time to time. And he's pretty good at it, Chris. Yeah, and he creates a sense of urgency for the defense because of the speed, because of the ability to put down that bunt. The next pitch misses, and that's ball two. Now you see even sluggers from time to time try and use the bunt really is a way to beat the shift that misses three and oh there's a strike three and one you know these marlins just aren't putting together very many good at bats in this one just one base runner to this point and it's not exactly early anymore they have guys in this lineup capable of sparking something but it just hasn't happened for them yet He goes down looking. And now no, here is that. Joey Wendell. Joey Wendell. And a swing to miss. Pretty impressive. We haven't seen that pitch from him much, but he's got a really good feel when he throws it. Strike two. Establishing both ends of the zone is critical. Most times guys are wanting to get hitters out down, but if you can get them to look up, get a called strike, that's going to make that strike zone a lot bigger. 
right side. Makes the grab for the second out. Maybe caught that one off the end just a little bit. Couldn't quite barrel it up enough to really drive it. Two outs, base is empty. Jacob Stallings, the next up for the Marlins. He's a catcher by trade, but the DH here in this one. First pitch, just misses. There's the strike. The 1-1 one -one is fouled off. Now this offense has just been locked down. Almost five full innings of shutout baseball. Fouls it off. Still one and two. The Marlins still looking for their first hit in this one. Pitch misses there. Two balls, two strikes. Two balls, two strikes. On the ground to the left. And foul ball. Line drive, base hit. And that keeps the inning going. Showed a lot of fight with two strikes in that A.B. Everything was on time and fluid in that swing. Got a pitch he could get the barrel on and lined it into center for the knock. Those always feel good. Nick Fortes, the next up for the Marlins. That's out to center field. Rojas gets under it. And he makes the catch. And that is that. Marlins leave one. They trail in this one, 3 nothing. And welcome back. We Where head to the bottom go? of the fifth. Really? Now, Brandon no Marsh. We talk about guys with good speed, and definitely he has it. But pushing the offense aside, for just a second, Chris, it's the defensive side that I think the speed factors in the most. And a good fastball to start him off at strike one. Well, he gets to balls that get by most people at that position. Just really impressive because there are certain times the ball comes off the bat, automatically that team that hit it thinks that they've got a base hit or they may have extra bases, and he just takes it away. Now bad. That's shortstop. Edmundo Sosa now at the plate. Sosa. And what makes him even quicker is the fact that he's so dialed in on the pitch as it's moving through the hitting zone. He can see how that hitter's lined up, what he's trying to do, and where that pitch is going to end up, which gives him that really quick first step. And that's why he makes so many great plays. And it's one and one. And that one missing low. And here it comes. That one fouled off. Two and two. A little tardy on that fastball. He's going to have to get it going a little quicker. Get that front foot down. Next offering is downstairs. Slow roller up the middle. In time to Guriel. Home half of the fifth inning moving along. Two quick outs. Jake Kay stands in for the Phillies. In there and it's on one. Hit on the ground to the right side. Guriel oh. takes it to the bag, and the Phillies are set down in order. So they make short work of them there. Five innings complete. It's the Phillies three, and the Marlins nothing. All set for the top of the six. Here's the third baseman, the third John baseman, Birdie. Number five, John, John. Birdie. 
Wheeler back to work. Turned on, but foul wide of third. The pitch. Tapped at the plate, but it's a foul ball. Ah, that hit him. And the leadoff man is aboard to start the inning. Fastball right there smoked him in the leg. At least it's in the leg and not in the wrist or the hand, but it still hurts, man. Edwards in the box again, takes the strike. This is one of those situations defensively where you can't try to do too much. You've got to make sure that you field the ball cleanly and get one out first. It's going to be tough to get two with this kind of speed in the batter's box. Birdie gets his lead at first with nobody out. That one the other way. Fair ball! Throw is offline, and he scores. And it's now a two-run game. Picks himself up at RBI. Just a great approach. It looked like that was exactly what he wanted to do with that pitch. And right off the bat, he knew he was taking that wide turn at first to head for second. Now the left fielder, Brian De La Cruz. Who's 0 for 2 with a pair of strikeouts. And first offering is fouled off. Just missed. No outs. Runner on second. Next one misses, and it's two and two. They tried to get him to go, chase the pitch down and away, but he wouldn't bite. Next offering is down low. He should get a pretty good pitch to hit here with three-hole hitter coming up if he's walked. Swing and a miss, and he is down on strikes for the third straight at bat. So digging in, Jesus Sanchez. And it really looks like these hitters have been in between with their timing today. Good fastball, excellent slider, but they've not been able to commit to one velocity and stay there. Next offering is in for a strike. Runner at second here, one gone. Foul ball, it stays nothing in two. And it's second. And now one and two. Pretty standard high 0-2 fastball right there. If you're smart, you look for something down in the zone, but not too far. Don't want to chase that breaking ball in the dirt. And a 1-2. Way high. <laughs> one out and a runner at second. Got him! back-to-back -back strikeouts. Chris, as we look back at the pitch sequence, he hadn't seen that curveball at all. How tough is it to adjust to something like that with a bunch of break when you haven't had a look at it yet? Yeah, I mean, you're dialed up for something firm. You never want to take a called third strike as a fastball, so you're going to be a little anxious before you recognize the pitch. And right there, clearly didn't see what was coming. Here's Guriel. 
There's a strike. Oh, one's the count. Runner takes off for third. Pitch is low. Throw to third. He's safe. I think he surprised everyone in the ballpark, and especially the pitcher. It wasn't a great lead there, but when he took off, I think he caught him off guard. Nice job to get to third. Two outs and one in scoring position. And the righty deals on the ground. And it's just foul. That was close. Righty to the plate. Check swing. Appeal to first. No swing. Just held it back there. Two two now. They tried to get him to chase on a slider down and away. Swing and a miss. Struck him out. Slider got him for strike three. So one run on one hit. No errors and a runner left. 8-9-1 scheduled in the bottom of the sixth. It's the Phillies three and the Marlins one. Back down for the bottom of the sixth, and there's a new pitcher on the mound, number 62. And he's been racking up strikeouts at a high rate this year. Now, typically at least one in inning, so he'll be tough to get to. And now the center fielder, Johan Rojas. The center fielder, Johan Rojas. The wind and the pitch. That clips a corner. Movement in the bullpen. David Robertson is loosening up. This would be his first appearance for the club. Puck, a left-hander, also throwing. Popped up. And that's a fair ball. Up next to Philadelphia. The catch. Yeah, Man right at first, Garrett Stubbs oh. stands in for the Phillies. And that one just misses a ball and no strikes. And the right hander deals. This one chopped on the ground, but foul. Here's a one one. And that's downstairs and outside. Fouls one off. Two and two. Nobody out. Runner at first. Fights it off. He'll see another. And he deals. Popped in the air. Left side. That's a hit. Lead runner to second, so two on and nobody out. Well, that's one of those yeah, knocks where you almost that's expect that's to get some jabs that's from that's your that's teammates that's when you get back to the dugout. Not oh, oh, much he can do about that one on the mound. Made a good pitch inside and jammed him. He just found a way to fight it off the other way and make it work. 
Stepping in the long ball threat, Kyle Schwarber. Rip to right, base hit. They won't test it here. Bases loaded, no outs. Seems like he got exactly what he was looking for right there. Didn't get cheated on that swing and squared it up perfectly. It came off the bat at 111, and when that's the case, the odds are very much in your favor as a hitter. Now the base is loaded. Big opportunity for them to break this game open. Here's Nicholas Castellanos. Ripped on a line to center. And that's going to roll to the wall. And he's got a two-run triple. How about that? Clears the bases. That pretty much split the zone down the middle, and those are the ones where you got to make them pay. So the Marlins go with a new arm, number 33. This southpaw's been really good against left-handed hitters. Nardi. So up next, Bryson Stock. And he swings and misses, and it's nothing in one. pitch this one lifted in the air left field and there's one away now batting third baseman Allen Bohm and next will be the cleanup hitter Alec Bohm That one's in there, 0 and 1. 0 and 1. And yeah, there's one. a ball. 1 and 1. Castellanos stands at third with one gone in the inning. Boom. Tries to hold up, appeal to first, and he held up. Two one now. Lifted in the air, right field. Sanchez gets under it, puts the squeeze on it. Runner tags from third. He's in to score in the sack fly. It's seven one. Man, there's a sack fly to bring home another run in this inning. These guys are just piling it on. We're seeing some really quality at bats out of this team right now. Two outs, bases empty, and now for the Phillies, Brandon Marsh. And the first pitch misses for ball one. And that's in for a strike. Two down, nobody on. That oh, one misses. Guy. Now two and two. You see how the catcher wanted that pitch up and in. Wanted to try to tie him up. That's the one thing we're seeing, that high fastball. You have to get it up there because of how hitters have changed their swings. Big lefty turns, kicks, deals. Caught him looking for the K. So it's four runs for him, four hits, no errors, and nobody left on. Seventh inning coming up. It's the Phillies seven and the Marlins one. Here's the new pitcher for the Phillies, Michael Lorenzen. 
on for the 30th time this year. Ladies and gentlemen, your attention, please. Garrett Hampson now, digs in now. Number 22, Michael Lorenzen. And a pitch. And there's the strike. Action in the pen down there. Gregory Soto, the left-hander, is getting that big fastball of his ready to go. And the pitch. Ball. And that one upstairs. Swing and a ground ball out to short. Throws across the diamond. And the leadoff hitter set down to open the seventh. The bat. The short shot. Joey. So digging in, Joey Wendell. This is a guy who's in the lineup first and foremost because of what he contributes defensively, Chris. And when you talk about preventing runs from being scored, this guy is a big contributor. Bounding ball here, rolls foul. I was always told it's hard to take you off the field when you play really good defense, especially at a premier position, and that's what he does. One down, base is empty. Going to count one and two. The hitting is going to come around. He's going to figure it out. But right now, his big asset is the way he plays the game on defense. Got it by him for the K. Now that And at the play for Miami, Jacob Stallings. Good swing out of him last time. Ripped a liner in the center. And now the 0-1. Well, he didn't like those first two pitches. Now in an 0-2 hole. He's going to have to battle. Hope he gets a mistake. Here's the 0-2. Good eye right there. Kicks and fires. Struck him out. Really fooled him with the breaking ball there. And the Marlins down quietly. They're down 7 to 1. Back here, Citizens Bank Park. Bottom of the seventh. And now the shortstop, Edmundo Sosa. Sosa. The wind of the pitch. Ball one, one there. Knocks it down to first, and he just gets it there in time. One away. So up next, Jake Cave. And a swing and a miss. Oh, one's the count. The wind of the pitch. Swings through that oh, one. Yeah. A lot of times you'll see a pitcher maybe double up on a pitch. This guy will throw it three times, four times in a row because hitters just can't lay off of it. Swings and misses. And now two gone. Came after now, with the fastball on 2 and that's a pretty good demonstration of what power pitching is all about. He's got the stuff, obviously, and right there he used it to put his opponent away without needing to waste any pitches. Rojas, the next to hit, takes ball one.
Next pitch is outside. He swings and fouls one off. That's off the mark. And now three and one. And that's ball four. Well, that's a really good take right there, and that's just mentally prepared, knowing that if it's not on a tee, you're going to take that pitch because you still have one more strike to work with. Not easy to lay off, but he did an excellent job in that plate appearance. Crushed to right, and that one's going to leave the park. Out of here. Home run. His second of the year, and they add a pair. It's 9-1. Love to see a hitter aggressive on the first pitch of an at-bat. You watch him from the on-deck circle, so when you step in the box, you're ready to pull the trigger wherever it's at. Really good job by the hitter. Total conviction on that swing. So the Philly batting order turns over. Kyle Schwarber stands in for the Phillies. First pitch, and that's in for a strike. 0-1. And now the lefty. And that gets the top of the zone for a strike. He doesn't seem to like to pitch up. Hasn't offered on either one of those pitches. 0-2 count now. I think the guy's going to climb the ladder out there. Left-hand hitter waits. And a swing and a miss. And that's that. But the Phils get two on this blast. And this is now a 9-1 ball game. Back here in Philadelphia, we're at the top of the eighth, and here's the catcher, Nick Fortes. Nick Fortes. And the right hander back to work, and that's outside. And now it's even up. In this situation, you expect the batters to be a little more patient, possibly take until they get a strike. With that, you don't want to miss your opportunity to get ahead early in the count. He didn't right there. They say you win. One ball, two strikes. The one, two. And a ball evens the count. Two balls, two strikes. And now it's filled up. Right-hander kicks deals. Fouls it back with two strikes. That was 95 to finish him off. No, just couldn't pull the trigger on the fastball right there, and I don't think he was taking it, thinking it might be a called ball or anything. I just think he was flat out frozen. Did not expect that location, in my opinion. Now the third baseman, John Birdie. That pitch gets the corner, and that's strike one. Just off the outside part of the plate. The one-two. 
That's to third, and that chance handled. Whips it to first on the run. Two up, two down here in the top of the eighth. Now back the second base, Xavier Edwards. Xavier Edwards, the next up for the Marlins. Fastball almost got him there. Right handed reliever. Foul ball. The 1 1. And a foul ball. Pitch. That's ball two. Got him. Third out. Nothing doing for the Marlins. They trail it big. It's 9-1. Bottom of the eighth. Here's the Phillies DH, Nick Phillies. Castellanos. The designated hitter. The line to kick the pitch. Oh. Just missed. And another ball. ball Liner, base hit. Clearly seeing the ball very well in this one. Just a solid swing right there. Caught it out front and ripped it into the outfield for the base hit. Those always feel great. So, man aboard. Bryson Stott, the next to hit. And first offering is fouled off. Yeah. Slider clips the corner. Two pretty nasty sliders to get this hitter in an 0-2 count. If you're up there at the plate, you got to look up in the zone and spit on anything that's down. And down on strikes. And that's the first out. So here's the cleanup hitter, Alec Bohm. That one misses. Ball one. That's a really good take right there. Slider down and in. Very difficult to get on the same plane and do anything with. At the belt and fires. There's a strike. That one Two missed. One strike. Next offering Three way ball. off the one plate. Strike. front and foul to the left side. Boom. Checks his swing. Now it appealed to first. And Matthew Ross right on it says he held up. Well, interesting. He went with the off speed and walked the hitter. Man, you got to challenge the guy with the fastball. New pitcher for the Marlins, A.J. Puck. He pitched yesterday and we'll see him once again. AJ Puck. And now the right fielder, Brandon Marsh. Singy, you gotta appreciate a guy who's this good defensively. 
I mean watching him track balls in the outfield it is beautiful. And there's a strike. So how much does his speed factor into his ability to go get it. It's heartbreaking for the hitter because off the bat he thinks this ball is going to get down because of that speed and the ability to make up so much ground he enters the picture and breaks a guy's heart. Ball to strike. Swing and a ball popped up. And the infield fly rule call. And Chris, beyond the fact that he's so incredible defensively, he also can swing the stick. Sosa in the box now. No balls in a strike. Activity in the bullpen. David Robertson up and throwing. Here comes the 0-1. Fly ball down the line. Sanchez ranging after it. Makes a nice run and catch. And that is that. Phillies leave a couple, but they still hold a commanding 9-1 lead. Out of the bullpen for the Phillies, Gregory Soto. Well, he's been hit pretty hard at times this season, as you see with the big ERA. So this is an important outing for him to get on the right track. And now for the Marlins, Brian De La Cruz. The left fielder, Brian De La Cruz. And a pitch. That's a strike. And it's 0-1. Soto, the lefty who lights up the radar gun. He features a sinker, a four-seamer, a slider, and he works in a changeup. The 1-1. One -one. And that one popped to short. Sosa moving under this one. And puts the squeeze on that. And there's one away. And up next for Miami, Jesus Sanchez. And takes low for ball one. Bullpen activity starting up now. Jeff Hoffman preparing to come on if needed. Swing and a miss. And a count one and one. I guess you throw it that hard, you can get away with locations like that right down the middle. But I still think it's a dangerous pitch. Don't want to do it again. Over to first, and the Marlins with just one out left. And now the first baseman, Yuli Gurriel. In there for strike one. Oh, and one. And a strike on the outside edge. That one, one ran inside, Two almost strikes. got him. And a swing and a miss, and that is the ball game. Well, a big win by eight runs, and when you have that kind of lead, you make it easier for the pitching staff to come out, make their pitches, pitch to contact, and not worry about giving up the lead. So nice job today all the way around to get the W. 9-1 is how it ends. For Chris Singleton and our entire crew here at MLB The Show, thanks for stopping by. I'm John Chomby. Talk to you soon.